what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we will be discussing and talking about password spraying and spray roasting so if you have ever wondered what are these attacks so basically these attacks target the active directory or windows active directory environment so basically First, let's talk about the SR Brosting and why these two attacks are closely connected with each other. And what's the outcome? What are the prerequisites? And we're going also to lay down examples of using the tools. So first, let's define SR Brosting. So SR Brosting is an attack that involves an attacker impersonating an authentication request in directory environment. And users are authenticating to the main domain controller Basically, every user sends what is called as authentication request. The authentication request is sent to what is called as the KDC. So KDC stands for the Key Distribution Center. It's maintained and operated by uh, through Kerberos authentication protocol. So when a user logs into their machine, they send an authentication request to the key distribution center using Kerberos, okay? And basically, if the user is valid, they will be granted what is called as, what is called as the ticket granting ticket. That's how it works normally. Now, in ASR Brosting, an attacker impersonates an authentication request. An attacker claims that they are a valid user requesting a ticket for the target user so basically an attacker uh, must have a hold of the username okay so basically that's why in the attack prerequisites it's required to have a list of users not necessarily valid users because in SR Brosting what we do here through the authentication request or by sending an authentication request and by monitoring the response from the key distribution center, you will be able to deduce whether the user is valid or not. Okay, so let's go back to the definition. Azure Brosting is a type of attack that involves an attacker impersonating an authentication request. For a user that has Kerberos pre-authentication feature not enabled or configured. So Kerberos pre-authentication here. What's that feature? This feature basically uh, verifies the user identity so basically what is the difference between an attacker sending the authentication request or a valid user trying to log in the difference is when pre-authentication is enabled for the user the KDC here will be able to verify whether the user is valid now if Kerberos pre-authentication is not configured for the user say the user is admin now in your Active Directory environment, if you have not enabled Kerberos pre-authentication for the admin, now an attacker will be able to impersonate okay, a request authentication request to the KDC as the admin user. And since Kerberos pre-authentication is not enabled, the KDC here will answer to the request of the attacker, indicating, yeah, the admin user is valid. Admin user exists on the system. However, when Kerberos pre-authentication is enabled and configured for the user, there will be not a, there will there will be no response to the attacker because they haven't provided a verification of their identity. So pre-authentication requires the client to prove its identity before the Kerberos key distribution center will issue a ticket. So here the attacker. If the, if the authentication or pre-authentication is disabled, the attacker will be able to verify whether admin user exists based on the list of users they have and will be able to extract the ticket or what's called a TGT. So that's why in SR Brosting, one of the important prerequisites is to have a list of users like admin, Joe. These users can be obtained through an earlier phases like enumeration phase or maybe obtained by having a quick look at the website of the target uh, company which you're doing pen testing for so when we have a valid list or a list of users not necessarily valid here but list of users we can use s3 attack 
to verify which one of these users is a valid user and if pre-authentication is disabled we'll be able to extract the ticket granting ticket now what's the importance of ticket granting ticket if we get a hold of this what happens later we will be able to obtain the password hashes So that's the outcome of ASR Browsing. The ideal outcome for the attacker is to verify the list of users, okay, and then extract ticket granting ticket. That's the ideal scenario. But even though pre-authentication is disabled or might be disabled for a target user, you may not necessarily get the ticket granting ticket. So at least in ASR Browsing, we'll be able to uh, uh, have a valid list of users and at the same time or verify the list of users we have or if we got lucky we can get the ticket granting tickets that's ASR Browsing and of course in the attack prerequisites we should have the domain name for example pentest.local is a domain name the domain name of the Active Directory uh, environment and we have a list of or we have a uh, got a hold of the domain controller IP that's easy list of valid or not valid users and pre-authentication disabled for ASR browsing to work a suspected password now this prerequisite is required for the password spraying attack so what's password spraying attack instead of trying multiple different passwords which may trigger the account lockout mechanism basically this is brute force what we can do, we can choose and use one password and attempt to authenticate with all the usernames we have acquired. Why password spraying is connected to ASR Browsing? Because first, in ASR Browsing, we have a list of users. We, we verify which of these users or which user among these users is a valid user. And then what we do here, we have one password. This password can be obtained from a word list or can be obtained from earlier stages of enumeration or can or could be obtained through phishing campaigns you have sent a phishing campaign to the uh, target users one of the users was tricked and it clicked on the phishing link they provided the password now you have a password what you can do here you can try this password with the list of valid users okay how do you know these users are valid you first do AS reprosting. So first AS reprosting, next password spraying. What's the outcome of password spraying? We, we will have a valid username and password. So instead, again, of doing brute force, which may trigger lockout mechanism, we do this. We have a list of users and one password. At the end, since these users are valid, we want to test the probability that one of these users may be using this password. And if we get lucky, we'll be able to get at least one pair of credentials, a username and password, valid username and password, so we can use it to log into their machine or to maybe an SMB server or any kind of other, other server, maybe WinRM, maybe SSH, so on and so forth. So why password hashes here? Password hashes, we said earlier that if we get lucky in ASR Browsing, okay, we will get password hashes through the ticket granting tickets. Now, let's talk about the tools. What are the required tools to get started? First, we have to install Impacket tools. And then we have to use Kubrot. So Kubrot is a very important tool if you want to do ASR Browsing. So ASR Browsing for Kubernetes and Impacket tools can be used to perform password spraying. Now, there might be a question here. What is the difference between, um, say, ASR Browsing and maybe you heard this, Cur Browsing? It's another type of popular attack. Let me show you guys here. So basically, in query browsing, what we do here, we have a valid list, or we have a valid uh, pair of credentials. Let's see what it is. So in query browsing, 
is an attack that targets service accounts in AD to escalate privileges. As you can see in cable resting here, we got a hold of the domain name and we got a hold of a valid credential. So may, you may be doing cable roasting later after conducting ASA roasting and password spraying. Third, you do curb roasting. So why you do curb roasting? Because you may get lucky and get a hold of a service account. Because when you get a hold of a service account, such as MySQL or uh, the service account of the web server, you will be able to do all sorts of things because these accounts used to be uh, privileged. These are the three most popular attacks against an Active Directory environment. And the outcome of these attacks is, as you can see, guys, we get password hashes, we get pair, we get valid usernames and passwords. The uh, the thing is, we get an entry to the domain controller using these attacks. I hope the explanation was clear. Now let's go and see live examples of using these tools. So we start with AS Hyperostic. We use Kubernetes, which is just a Python script, can be cloned from this repository. Okay. After cloning the tool, we use this command. We specify the domain name, in this case it's uh, office, and dash dc, the IP address of the domain name, dash t, how many threads, and the user list. Now here, as said earlier, the user list doesn't necessarily have to include valid users, okay? It could be any list of suspected users you have gathered earlier. The idea of AS Reprosting is to make sure which one of the users is a valid user. As you can see, upon executing the command, we get a list or an output includes the valid users. But unfortunately, we will not uh, be able to extract any passwords or ticket granting tickets. We just got a confirmation from the key distribution center that these users are valid. Okay, so now we know which users among the list of the users we got are valid. The next thing what we do here, using the same tool, Kubernetes, we can attempt to conduct password spraying. How do you do that? We do the same command, as you can see, but there is an additional option we specify dash passwords. In dash passwords, we specify the list of the passwords. Now here, it's very recommended to have one password, okay? Because in password spraying, remember, we are attempting one password against a list of users. It's the total opposite of brute force. In brute force, we have a list of users, we have a list of passwords, and maybe one user or two. And again, here we uh, we're not lucky, and we got no passwords. Okay, so having done the first step in the attack chain, which is completing the SR roasting, now we have a list of valid users. The next step is to have a valid password or a suspected password. In my case, the suspected password is stored in a file named password. The next step is to do password spraying. So now we want to know which one of these users may be using the password I have. So we go to in packet and we use, uh, let's see here, no, to crack map exec. So in crack map exec, we do password spraying, but this password spraying will work against the SMB server. As you can see here, with the crack map exec, I specify the protocol, the IP address, the domain name, the list of users. The list here will better be uh, the list that contains the valid users. So we have a, the valid users from here, we put them here. Dash P password here, the file contains the password that that uh, I have. And then continue on success. So as you can see guys, one of the users turned out to be using the same the password here to log in to the SMB server. We can attempt to use this password as well to try to log in to the user log workstation using WinRM. Next, what we do here, we use the combination of the valid a username and valid password to list the shares. Then you can go ahead and maybe 
um, try to reveal the contents of one of these shares, such as SOC um, analysis. If you do that, this should reveal the contents of this share. Recurring with SMB1 for, yeah, it has to do with the uh, version here. But anyway, you get the idea. So we have now a valid pair of credentials. Let's go back to Impacket. So what we do here? Here, we use, again, the list of users we have that we obtained from ASR Brosting. We use it to perform ASR Brosting attack, but this time to get the ticket granting tickets. So if you were not successful in getting any tickets or password using Kubroot, you can attempt to use get NP users from in packet, specifying the IP address of the domain controller, the list of users or valid users you obtained from Kubroot, the domain name, and here that's what you will get, at least that's what you'll get. As you can see, these users, it is a confirmation that these users don't have the pre-required or pre-authentication enabled, which means they are susceptible to uh, ASAP roasting and susceptible to the fact that we can obtain their ticket granting tickets. But for some reason, or for a reason we don't know, we were not able to get any ticket granting ticket using either or neither by using GetMPU nor by using Kubrot. But that's how you do it in general. All right, guys. So that was it. 